When you read about David being pursued by Saul, and he moves from place to place to place, the, the forest of Hereth, or over to Moab to ask the king there to keep his parents safe. He's a fugitive, trying to stay one step ahead of him. But this is a decade-long pursuit. There's a lot that happens in between David killing Goliath and him hiding out in a cave. Saul sent soldiers after him a couple different times. He fled to the priests at Nob. He hid out in Gath, Goliath's hometown. And eventually he goes to the cave of Adullam. If he were to go from Gath to the cave of Adullam, which is what he did, he would have had to walk through the Valley of Elah. I wonder what went through his mind. I mean, just prior to this, that was the location where he had been praised because of what he did. And now he's on the run. The Caves of Dullam sit in a fairly remote part of the country. I think that's probably one of the reasons why he came out here. He knew that he would be at least temporarily secluded from King Saul and his men as they were chasing him. Wow, this is incredible. It is so much larger in here than I expected. There are caves heading off in that direction. There's caves heading off in this direction. I can see light down here, so there must be another opening down there somewhere. This is the perfect place for David to hide. He's up high. He could easily go outside this cave. He could see for miles around him. A natural fortified location. How deep does this cave system go? You know, I have no idea. You want to go find out? It looks like the walls have been built up and reinforced. Right, they may have been filled in. This may have been more open during the time of David. Oh, surely to fit all those people. That's right. David's time here at the Cave of Adullam was very short. And there are only a couple of verses in 1 Samuel 22 that mention that. Even though it's mentioned so briefly, obviously it makes sense why he came here. <laughs> Look at how much this opens up in here. This is huge. Another tunnel leading out. There are little nooks and crannies all over the place. There's a place for a millstone, a small millstone. Hey, look over here. Look over here. Wow. It looks like an entrance. How deep does it go? It looks like the wall used to continue around. Maybe it's been backfilled. But the cave continues on on the other side. There's just room after room. Oh, man. Look at this. Oh, my. It was surreal to think about this being the spot where David hid out and to wonder which of these entrances was the one that he used every day. Which of these places was the place where he slept? And to think about this cavern being filled up with the people that had come to him with the soldiers, his mighty men. Could 400 people really have met up with David and hid out here? Once you got into the cave system, it could easily house as many people, as the text says, that came and united with David here. It felt like we had gone through a time warp back to that day, and you might see David walking around at any moment.
I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.